Porsche isn't really famous for V8 engines, which in a way is strange, because although the corridors of the engine department in Stuttgart haven't often rattled to the sound of an eight-cylinder engine, when they have, something big has usually happened. Take, for example, the latest 918 Hybrid, a world-changing hypercar with a V8 engine at its heart. And then in the early 2000s, we had the Cayenne, a car which caused a stir among Porsche enthusiasts, diversifying the brand's sports car image and quite literally rescuing the company from financial ruin. But it was 40 years ago this year that the Porsche V8 story first started. That's when a test car first rolled out of Stuttgart with an eight-cylinder engine. And given that it was also water-cooled, oh, and front-engined, you must think that the engineers knew what noise they were about to make. That right there is a Porsche 928. Let me introduce you. It wasn't just the oily bits, though, that caused a stir when the 928 was revealed to an expectant motoring public in 1977. The car was outrageous in the design stakes, too. It was quite obviously more GT car than sports car, but that said, no one had ever seen anything quite so bold and futuristic. The car didn't have many conventional lines, from its sunken headlights and shark nose grille to the bulbous rear end and the bizarre raked door frames. The 928 had a statement to make. It wanted the world to know that Porsche was changing. The 924 and this 928 joined the 911 in the firm's model lineup and showed that the company was exploring different entry points to the market. It was even believed in some quarters that this car was designed to replace the 911 altogether. But it didn't. Format was king. The rear-engined, rear-wheel drive, air-cooled layout of the 911 still worked. But this was something different. Different sounded good. In fact, Porsche stated in their launch marketing that the 928 was shaking up the automotive hierarchies by combining three cars into one. The first, a thoroughbred sports car. The second, a comfortable luxury cruiser. And the third, a versatile utility vehicle. Sports car, yes. Luxurious, yes. Versatile, yeah. Utility vehicle, no, not at all. But since it's such a good acronym, I will now refer to the 928 as a VUV or VUV. And the first thing, if you talk about the VUV to people that you'll hear, is that it was designed for the American market. Well, given that this car was designed to replace the 911, you have to say that it wasn't just America hinging on the success of this car, it was Porsche's entire world. That makes it pretty important. Time to bust some more myths. You'll get told that the 928 is heavy, wallowy, that it doesn't handle like a Porsche should. Actually, the transaxle layout of the 928 means just like its 924, 944 and 968 counterparts, the weight is spread very well across the car. It's a lot less leery than the 911. You'll also get told that the 928 rusts. It shouldn't, not really. The body is galvanized with aluminium panels and aerodynamically designed plastic front and rear bumpers, which in most cases don't even warp and misshape like the science of a 40-year-old car tells you they should. It's like Porsche knew that the VUV had to stand the test of time and not just in the design stakes. Back in the late 70s, early 80s, the spec sheet on this car must have been, frankly, astonishing. It is just full of electronics and gadgets. Gadgets to make you feel more relaxed, more comfortable, more sophisticated. But I have to say, the best gadget of all is under the bonnet. Because a V8 engine is never a bad thing, but this one has the revised 4.7. That means over 300 brake horsepower and a manual dog leg gearbox to administer it. I tell you what, lots of grunt, or in the language that Porsche was clearly aiming for, much forward motion. It was, after all, very sophisticated. Yeah, right. The 928 has stood the test of time. 
and when it won European Car of the Year in 1978 amidst a rapturous reception from the world's motoring press, this car was tipped as a vision of the future of the sports car. While purists will dismiss the 928 as an experiment that failed to displace the 911, the more commercially astute will draw comparison between this car and other pivotal cars in the Porsche story, the Cayenne, Panamera and 918 hybrid. The technical similarities are up for discussion, but the approach stands firm. All these cars changed the face of Porsche. While we're talking about faces, there's a downside to the Porsche 928 that I need to tell you about. And it's been niggling away at me. When you put the headlights on and they rise up out of that dramatic aerodynamic front end, something horrible happens. Two of the most ugly light units you've ever seen pop up. They're like angry bullfrogs screaming obscenities at the hedgerows. And that leaves me no option but to sum up possibly the most important car Porsche has ever made besides the 911 like this. The 928 is a powerful, dramatic, luxurious, refined, versatile Grand Tourer that you have to wear a bag over your head to drive when it gets dark. That V8 sounds even better in here. <laughs> 